I'm going to start by coming clean. My answer to the question why medicine at my interview was so cliche and unoriginal, it physically pains me thinking about it now. My reasoning for wanting to be a doctor when I applied to medical school was twofold. One, I liked science at school. Two, it seemed like a good career choice. I'm serious. Just those two things were what were driving me toward medicine at the time, but I cannot tell you how glad I am to have had the opportunity to go to medical school. It's only over the years of first studying medicine and then practicing as a doctor that I've gained a far deeper appreciation of why being a doctor really is the greatest job in the world. In this workshop, we're gonna cover why interviewers ask this question, what they mean by it, and how you're gonna answer it. We'll then finish with three common mistakes that you have to avoid. Let's kick off by first talking about why you're being asked the question, why do you want to be a doctor in the first place? Now there are a couple of obvious reasons such as testing your communication skills and giving the interviewers a brief insight into what makes you tick, but I want to focus on the reason that no one talks about. The reason you're going to get asked why do you want to be a doctor is because your interviewers want to make sure you're going to be a good investment. Let me explain. Interviewers don't want to just give out offers willy-nilly to anyone that applies and doesn't fart or fall asleep in their interview. That's because the reality is medical training and medicine as a career path in general is an incredibly long and challenging path. By giving you an offer to study medicine at their medical school, they're not just allowing you to pay £9,000 a year to attend medical lectures. By giving you an offer to study medicine, these interviewers are actually investing a huge amount in you. And I mean this both metaphorically and literally. Your interviewers, to an extent, are acting as the gatekeepers of medical training. They're literally deciding who will be tomorrow's doctors. They've got a responsibility to try and select applicants who have the right qualities and attitudes to carry this title. By offering you a place at their medical school, they're investing their faith in you as the future of medicine. Secondly, I mentioned you're an investment in the literal sense of the word too. If you're a medical student in the UK, the actual cost of your five years of training far exceeds your course fees. The government is investing in you and your training in the hope that you'll work as a diligent and responsible doctor within the NHS for your career. It's only through this lifelong work in the NHS that you provide value to the system that balances the cost of training you in the first place. So it's because of these two considerable investments that medical schools want to select applicants who don't just have a surface level interest in studying medicine. They want to select applicants who've not simply applied just because their parents suggested it and they couldn't think of anything else better to do. If you don't truly have at least some passion for the study of medicine, the reality is you won't have that drive to keep on going when the going gets tough. It may be that you don't even finish medical school because you couldn't motivate yourself to learn about topics that didn't excite you. If you don't genuinely find some sort of enjoyment in the long on call hours and even the horrendously busy shifts, you'll find yourself burnt out incredibly quickly. And if you're completely burnt out, you're not gonna be a good doctor and you're not going to be doing the NHS justice. That's the reality and that's why interviewers ask applicants this question. Now this may seem blindingly obvious to you, but I just want to take a second to think about what you're actually being asked with the question, why do you want to study medicine? Of course, on a surface level, this question is eliciting your motivations for applying to medical school. However, there's a few deeper layers that you may not have considered before that make this question so powerful. These include touching on your core values as a person and even what your aspirations in life are. This interview question is also testing your knowledge of what the job of a doctor actually entails. 
Through a perfectly crafted answer, you'll be demonstrating your in-depth knowledge of the duties of a junior doctor and why you think you'd be perfectly suited to them. If you slightly miss the mark with your answer, you may be hit with a follow-up question of why not nursing then? This can be incredibly difficult to answer if the reasons you gave weren't particularly specific or you don't have a great understanding of the differences in the roles and duties of doctors versus nurses. Being able to address the different layers of what you're being asked within the question, why medicine, is why thorough preparation is so important in delivering a standout answer. Right, let's get down to the nitty gritty. How you're actually going to answer the question, why do you want to be a doctor, when you're asked it in your interview. Here's a model answer. I've wanted to be a doctor since I was six months old. My teddy bear became very sick and watching the expert care Mr. Cuddles received at the hands of the doctors inspired me to found my own hospital on my eighth birthday. I wait a minute, but what if you don't have an incredibly inspiring inception tale of your own? Then how do you answer this question? Well, I'm gonna teach you a five step process for crafting your perfect answer. Step one, to start off, you're gonna to need to identify your key reasons for pursuing medicine as a career. Brainstorm as many as you can think of to why you want to be a doctor and write them all down. Off the top of my head, a few I can think of are, you have the opportunity to help people at some of their most vulnerable times in life. The vocation has a huge scope for different work depending on your interests. You have incredibly varied day-to-day -day work in clinical medicine. The diagnostic challenge posed by patients can be extremely rewarding to solve. And you're in a position to put the latest advances in medical research into practice to improve patients' lives. Now from your list, I'd recommend you pick out three core reasons. These are your main driving factors and they're what you're gonna build your answer around. Just bear in mind what will set your answer apart from the hundreds of others that interviewers will have heard that day is authenticity. You have to answer honestly and authentically to yourself, not by picking a couple of common reasons you've seen online. Step two, now you've identified your core reasons, step two is all about analyzing what your personal strengths are and how they lend themselves to these motivations. The aim here is to subtly demonstrate to the interviewer that you'd be a perfect fit for the job. So say for example, you picked out the reason that you want to help people. What about you do you think would make you particularly proficient in providing that help? Perhaps it's that you've got a particularly caring nature and your friends and family often turn to you when they need some moral support. Try and think of a couple of points for each of your core reasons that you've chosen. Step three. Now in step three, I want you to brainstorm relevant experiences and anecdotes that back up all your reasoning from step two. Try and include concrete examples to back up your statements when you can. So carrying on from my last example, the time you received a thank you card for all your help from one of the residents at the care home you volunteer at would be an excellent anecdote to back up the idea that you're an excellent caregiver and caring person. Work, school, work experience, or your extracurricular activities are all excellent places to try and draw experiences from to support your reasoning. Step four. Step four is where we start to bring it all together. Put everything we've gone over in steps one to three onto paper. I'd start with a mind map. From this, you can then start bullet pointing out sections of your answer, combining each core reason with a strength of yours and an example or anecdote. Using these core reason chunks, you can then build out your answer into a more complete form. In your answer, you may want to show how you came to the decision to study medicine. Was it a personal hospitalization or watching another doctor at work? These can be a great anchor in your answer and are a fantastic way to personalize and add a human touch to your response. If you don't have one, 
don't worry. I have no idea how I first came up with the idea of wanting to be a doctor, so I didn't make it a feature point of my why medicine answer. If you are going to include a personal story, I keep it relatively brief and woven into the rest of your reasoning. Plenty of people are cared for by doctors but don't want to go on to study medicine. What particularly influenced you? However, if you do have a genuine personal tale of how this sparked an interest in the profession that you then explored with work experience and taste of the days, say it. Step five. Step five is all about practice. Practice your answer with your friends, your family, and in mock interviews. Your answer will likely evolve a bit over time as you deliver it over and over again. That's perfectly natural and will ultimately lead to a better response. The pressure of interview day can easily make even the most confident candidate's minds go blank. The more you practice, the less likely you'll start your answer with a blank face and a long um, as you desperately try to remember why you did want to go to medical school. And there you have it, my five step process for crafting your own perfect answer. Finally, I want to touch on three common mistakes to avoid in your answer. Number one, covering too many points. I recommend covering three main motivations within your answer. Now admittedly, this isn't a steadfast rule, so don't be too concerned if you count up exactly how many points you touched on in yours and it's above or below this number. However, what you want to try and avoid is simply reeling off a long list of different motivations of why people choose to study medicine. We're all multifaceted creatures, so if we did list out every reason that plays into our desire to go to medical school, it would likely be a very long list. But what's going to breathe life into your response is the elements of your unique personality that you can inject in through anecdotes and deeper explanations. And to do this effectively, you need to explore each of your key motivations in detail. Don't fall for the trap of covering lots of points, but all only briefly. Number two, trying too hard to be original. There's no such thing as bad or overused answers to why medicine, just unsubstantiated answers. You don't need super duper unique, never heard before answers to the question. Your core motivations, such as liking science, wanting to care for people, and enjoying a diagnostic challenge can be the same reasons that literally hundreds of other applicants give these interviewers. However, it's reasons delivered in a clear, substantiated and authentic manner that are what's important. You can stop worrying that you don't have an inspirational eureka moment that sparked your lifelong passion for medicine. Just focus on how your motivations impact you as an individual. Number three, sounding too rehearsed. Now this last common mistake can actually become harder to avoid the more prepared you are. It's sounding too rehearsed. What's really gonna kill the personal nature of your answer is if it sounds like you're reading it straight off a script. Interviewers are not gonna be impressed if you immediately launch into a monotone, pre-prepared monologue following being asked why you want to be a doctor. There are a couple of ways you can avoid this pitfall. Number one, if you want to learn a set script, then you need to be particularly mindful of including emotion and gesture in your answer to really sell it as your true self speaking. Avoid the glazed over medicine applicant robot look. Or two, don't prepare or learn an exact script at all. I'd actually recommend this approach personally. If you have your ideal answer set out in bullet points, you can avoid the possibility of a wooden script delivery. Your answer will likely slightly vary each time you give it, but if you know your bullet points, you should hit your key points every time. Your small margin for variation in the answer should give your interview performance a far more authentic feel. Just be careful that you do know the bullet points well 
so you don't skip over key sections of your reasoning on interview day. And that's a wrap. You should now have a solid understanding of how you're gonna answer the question, why do you want to be a doctor? I'm very active on YouTube, so if you're not already subscribed, head over to my channel and subscribe if you'd be interested in more content just like this. Otherwise, best of luck in your interview. I know you're gonna smash it.